Number eight for us, this is a big one. We want to qualify the buyers that we sell to. Anybody can sell a house if they only charge $500 up front and the payments are $300 a month. People will flock to you, they'll line up outside. But um, you, number one, you can't get the payments that low on a new house. And number two, if that's all they have committed to the transaction, the likelihood of default skyrockets. So we found that uh, we have to be a little bit more patient to find the right people. And we go through the entire list. Everything that a conventional lender would look at, you'll find that we look at. We're pulling the credit, we get the criminal report, we calculate the debt to income ratios, we verify the employment. Everything that a conventional lender does, we're looking at also. So in terms of qualifying buyers, we use something that we refer to as a pre-qualification worksheet. And the idea behind that is to eliminate the unqualified people as quickly as possible. <coughs> Our managers don't have time to show a house to everybody who wants to go look at one. They don't have the time to sit down and talk to people and establish rapport with them and, and get to a point where that person finally fills out an application, finally pays a $50 application fee, and then we start processing it. So we wanted something to eliminate the unqualified people as quickly as possible. Obviously, we want to eliminate a renter. We're looking for the guy who's renting now, but wants to become a homeowner. Uh, somebody with insufficient income. It's, it's too bad, but when somebody comes in and they're making $1,000 a month, they can't buy a $40,000 house. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, insufficient down payment, uh, same thing. We want enough of a uh, commitment that uh, they're gonna stick with the transaction. Uh, we, we, we don't want the person who got a raise and then goes out and buys a $50,000 truck. We don't want people, this is a true story, and a couple come in uh, a few months ago and said our credit score is 825. We said, wow, that's, that's really high. The husband had 400 and the wife had 425. <laughs> Obviously, we want to eliminate the drug dealers and the prostitutes and the people that nobody else wants to live next to. So with this pre-qualification uh, worksheet, worksheet, our script goes sort of like this. We're going to ask you eight questions. Recognize right now that we're going to verify everything that you tell us. We're um, going to charge you an application fee if we get tentative approval with this pre-qualification worksheet. If the information that you've given us is true, and we charge you an application fee, and we turn you down, we're going to give you the application fee back. If the information you've given us is incorrect, if you've lied to us, essentially, then you're going to forfeit the application fee, and we're going to find out, because, as I say, we're going to verify everything you tell us. If we approve you, we will apply your application fee to the down payment. And these are the eight questions that we focus on. Uh, landlord reference current monthly rent, how long they've been renting, criminal history, credit report, down payment available, debts and obligations, and income or employment history. And the reason that we want these last two is that we want to calculate the front end and back end debt to income ratios. And I'll show you an example of that here. So the front end ratio, or uh, what George uh, refers to as a HEF, uh, housing expense factor, expense factor is um, according to federal guidelines, should not exceed 30% of gross income. And the back end ratio, which is housing costs plus other debts divided by gross income, should not exceed 40%. So here's an example, $27,000 a month, $300 a month in child support, $3,000 a month total, um, $300 for lot rent, $500 for a lease option house payment, $800 total, $800 divided by the $3,000, 27% front end debt to income ratio. That is acceptable to us. Where we usually run into problems is the back end ratio, because the back end is looking at the housing costs plus any other obligations they have. In this example, $350 child support, $1,150 uh, divided by the $3,000 is 38%. So this would be acceptable to us too. 
has an acceptable front-end ratio and an acceptable back-end ratio. But what usually happens, or frequently happens, is that we start looking at their other obligations, and they have something like a $400 a month truck payment. So now you've got $1,550 in total obligations, which raises their back-end ratio, in this case, to 52%. So frequently we find people passing the front-end ratio, but failing the back-end ratio because of these debts and obligations that they have. Um, this whole idea of calculating uh, debt-to-income ratios is something that you can find um, condoned, if not uh, recommended and required by uh, federal regulations. The buzzword that they use is ability to repay, ATR. If you do a Google search on it, you find dozens of federal regulations that talk about a lender ensuring that a borrower has the ability to repay. If we don't do that, we can actually get in trouble. If we don't confirm that somebody can actually repay the loan, then um, we have probably done a disservice to the borrower. Here's another article I wrote about the uh, pre-qualification worksheet. George published this with his uh, COVID-7, and I've got a copy of it in the back as well. <clears throat> 